Carrie has her coffee and we are uh, making sure everybody can see and hear us. Folks, this session is gonna be pure gold. Check it out. If you have ever thought about working at home, if you do work from home, the topic is so fun. It is how to work from home in a house full of kids. <laughs> Mary, talk to us. How many kids are at home and how long have you been doing this? Uh, well, first, let's start with that second question. I have been working at home for over 21 years and um, and I have four kids. They range in age now from 12 to 24. And I, I like to tell people who say, oh, yeah, but they can all feed themselves and shower and whatever. Listen, they were not born this age. That's if you funny. do the math, you'll see that I started the business because of the older two. And they were uh, one and three when I started my first business. One so, and three. We've been through every stage. We've been through toddlers. We've been through pregnancy. We've been through newborn. We've been through college, special needs, um, high school, junior high, all of it, working at home with kids. Oh, man, that mm -hmm. is unbelievable. And how did you keep it going? Because I'm sure that took so much coffee. patience. So much, <laughs> yeah, coffee. Exactly. How, um, like, give, us some, give us some tricks. Well, there are no tricks. First of all, you just got to keep showing up. First of all, keep showing up, keep doing your thing. And while our kids are important and they're the reason why we do what we do, uh, the we, the collective we, all of us in the room, uh, they, they cannot be the epicenter of the universe. And it's healthy for them to know uh, that there are some boundaries. It's healthy for them to know how to entertain themselves for short periods of time. It's healthy for them to know that what you do is keeping the household running. It's healthy for them to know that you're serving clients and stepping into your gifts and doing what you have been called or created to do. That's healthy. And that role modeling is more important than any money you do or don't make. So um, that's huge. Can we talk about that because we've, yeah. seen, we've seen in our society that the the experts say when you put your kid as front and center when you spoil them you're actually hurting them and what i hear you saying is hey you're actually telling your family this is a good thing i'm working it's bringing us the ability to have fun and food how how could it be negative when you're teaching your kids to create a meal on their own or to get their own snacks you know or to entertain themselves for short periods of time we have to learn that Two, we have to know we can't just drop everything and go do all the time. There are times at like now when my door is shut and yeah. there are of course they're asleep because now they're teenagers, so they're asleep. But there are times when I'll say, listen, I'm shutting the door. If you're throwing up, you know where to direct that. If you're bleeding, you know, just ask a sibling or let me know. And, you know, I'm only slightly exaggerating. There were times when they were toddlers or babies that um, they might be in here in a, a high chair. I, I did a CNN interview once with a producer with a kid in a high chair, like feeding the kid while I'm doing the scene. I, I stepped out of the Smurfs movie, uh, you know, to interview with a Fox producer one time and they got it and they love it. And they may fuss or try to shame or guilt you or manipulate you. But then later you'll hear them telling their friends, oh, yeah, we we did that Fox interview on the way to blah, 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 because, you know, that's what we do. That's what that's how our mom rolls. Yes. So, so so it's good for them to see that self isn't first. It doesn't mean sacrifice the kids. It means mm -hmm. teach the kids that that time and boundaries are important. So I have a little acronym that I use and we don't have time to do the whole thing, but it's Brad. I always say Brad is my silver bullet for working at home and he's not a pool boy and he's not a cabana boy and he's not a servant that I have. But Brad is an acronym and it stands for boundaries, routines, accountability and deadlines. Oh, that's good. That yeah. is so and good. Boundaries means boundaries on your workspace, whether you have an office or not, or a corner of the dining room table or your bed, you have to have some sacred space in order to work your business. And you have to have boundaries around your technology. Your kids should not be playing on your work computer. If you say to me, I can't do my business because my kids on my technology, listen, the school districts right now have checkout policies. They can work from their mobile phone. They wow. can whatever. You need to make your business a priority. 
If mm. you're not, then you might need to recognize those self-sabotaging behaviors of you're giving yourself excuses so that you don't have to do what you don't want to do. That's good. And the that's kids good. are that. I think John Acuff calls that the noble obstacle, right? That's when we create that obstacle that sounds really great and everybody feels sad for us. But at the same time, kids do not touch my work technology and they don't come in my office except after hours. Like last night, they came in here and filmed videos because they like my ring light. They like to do that, but it was after hours. It was not during work time. So you have to have boundaries. You have to have boundaries on your time. If you are picking up the phone all day, every day while you're supposed to be creating or serving or whatever, you're using that as an excuse to be reactive. I do, you know this, I do not pick up the phone or react to things unless I have it scheduled or unless it's after income producing time. I've had to train my family on that. I've had to train my friends on that. And it's a process, but first you have to respect it for yourself. So those are a couple of things about boundaries. Kids will believe and your spouse Kids and your spouse will believe about your business, what you communicate to them, not what you say to them, but what you show to them. I love that. Wow. So basically, I hear you saying that the people who say family and business cannot coexist are in many times making a noble excuse and they simply have not maybe opened up their mind to the fact that it can and I'm with you, my friend. Um, my first book came out in 2004 and our first child was born in 2005. And I was not one of these dads who's like, oh, baby, you get up all night and you take care. You know, like my wife was saying, I'm with them all day. You get up in the night. And, and we're going to have some turns. We're going to take turns. We're going to take turns here. or, you know, the form formula, you know, that type of stuff. And who knows, maybe I'll get bashed for formula. I don't know. But, but you know um, I have two adopted and two biological. And I'll okay. just tell you that formula and I was a formula baby out of necessity. And the fact is, stop, stop all that mess. We have bigger things to argue about right now than formula or nursing. But the fact is, you have to have boundaries. People that say, oh, I can't work with the kids at home. Nope. That just means you are refusing to create the disciplines necessary to work at home. You're refusing oh, wow. to discipline yourself. First and foremost, you're refusing to discipline your kids about what wow. that boundary looks like. I love that, folks. And listen, we have someone taking notes right now, which is great. Thank you for uh, doing that, Faye. Boundaries, routine, accountability, and deadlines. Let's unpack some of those. Yep. Um, go for it, my friend. Yes. Yeah, so boundaries we just talked about. You have to have those. You have to believe those. You have to set them. Routine. Can we talk about like some of y'all in the room? I'm not going to make eye contact, but some of y'all in the room need to shower. You need to shower and you need to get out of your pajamas. You need to wear some clothes that don't have elastic in them or nothing's going to fit in two weeks. Check in with your jeans, friends. Um, you need to get up and have some routines because not only will they believe what you do about your business, but they'll model what they see you doing. And if you don't look like you're working, um, hey, mom's in her PJs like us. Dad's in his PJs like us. Uh <laughs> Uh, I do. I think it was John Acuff again. I saw a tweet the other day that on day three, flannel spells failure, you know, so, oh, yeah. so get out of your clothes. I have a brother that uh, I have three, but one of my brothers in high school, even he would dress in a, a tie and a button down on test days. And he wow, would say, the mental edge. I perform better when I look better. I perform better when I look better. Um, I grew up in a pretty strict household. They were not allowed to wear T-shirts to school. We wore collared shirts or we dressed for school because my mom would always say, you act the way you dress. And so get up, get dressed. You don't have to do full hair and makeup unless you're on video every day and you want to, which is what I've been doing and what I'm making myself do. Interesting what I'm making myself do because it communicates a difference. Let me give you an example. My older two kids are 23 and 24. My younger two are uh, 12 and almost 16. And I will say when I parented the older two and I worked at home with the older two, when I got dressed or straightened up the house, they would say, who's coming over? Mm. The younger two, if I'm in my pajamas or in yoga pants or whatever, they're saying, do you feel okay? Oh. You can change and you can model that change, but you have to discipline yourself. Get up before the kids, set your dang alarm, have a routine, get up, have your coffee. Y'all, my coffee is not because I need the caffeine. If you know me or watch me, you know I have extraordinary amounts of natural energy. It's not about the caffeine. It's the routine. 
There you go. Some routines. Get up, do some hygiene for the love and get dressed and you'll feel more like being productive and they'll respect it more too. Yeah. Get ready for work. It's more special if you say, okay, Friday is going to be casual Friday. Friday is going to be, you know, pajama Friday. It Then it becomes something fun and something to celebrate instead of you wondering like, well, how did I put on 20 pounds during the isolation? How come none of my clothes fit? And then you defeat and defeat and defeat. Also, be ready to greet clients. Be ready to go live. Be ready. You know, if you're hiding from the UPS guy when he delivers to your door, you're answering the door like this. That's a problem. You're not in business. You're playing. Stop it. Whoa. Stop it. Wow, folks. Let Sorry. me know what you think. Let me know. And listen, tag somebody, share this thing because it's a little bit controversial and, and in a good way. I think it's a good thing. Because yeah, and, and the reason it's controversial is because people don't want to hear it. That's right. And <laughs> we, we've heard the phrase, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. That's been, you know, big for a couple years. But I hear what you're saying. Like if you just roll out of bed and, you know, pour in some Captain Crunch and uh, watch watch the Internet headlines, then, oh, somebody calls and you're like, hello. You almost feel like you're faking. Exactly. Exactly. Here's the other thing. When we're talking about routines, how are you feeding yourself? How are you feeding yourself with the media? How are you feeding yourself with who you're communicating with? How are you feeding yourself food wise? Y'all put down the snacks, put them down. You know, we, it, the kids are consuming an extraordinary amount of just mess right now because they're not on a set schedule. Yeah. Um, and we'll talk about some flex here in a minute. But after day three of isolation, I saw that, okay, okay, Carrie, you got to get back to your routine. So now I, I legit have timers on my phone. When do I take my meds and my vitamins, my supplements? When is, when am I done with my last cup of coffee? When is lunch and what is lunch? So I know this will, some people won't love this. If those, those of you that don't know my story, I've lost over 120 pounds. And I also have a wedding on October the 1st. My oldest daughter is getting married. And so I've already bought, here's another strategy. I've already bought the mother of the bride's dress. Oh, and I, it's, it's so fitted. Like there's not room for COVID pounds in there. There's no room for COVID pounds. So That's I have right. it hanging on my closet and I am eating the same thing for, uh, to break my fast in the morning and then for my mid afternoon. Now dinner, I eat with my family and I eat a reasonable amount, but then I shut it down at a certain time. So every morning I'm eating the same thing. Every afternoon I'm having the same snack because wow. I have to fuel myself smart. I don't feel good when I eat certain things. It's defeating when I eat certain things. And I'm role modeling for my family about certain things. Um, one of my kids has dropped like seven pounds since the beginning of spring break because guess what? She's watching. She's watching. We're moving. We're working out. We're in the backyard. We're, I don't mean we're like doing structured workouts. I mean, we're yeah. staying in motion. Staying so, active. You're not saying, yeah. hey, come here. Let's watch our fifth Netflix movie. You're right. saying, hey. She's a, she's a volleyball player. She's doing yeah. this like three hours a day, just yeah. like practicing her setting like three hours a day. Her upper body is ridiculous right now, but um, she bakes, she experiments. And so we've limited that to once a week now because we were like eating all the baked goods <laughs> every day. Yeah. So routine, routine is about what you eat, what you consume with your mind, what you're consuming spiritually, who you're interacting with, who you're following, wow. make the unfollow and mute button on social medias, make those your friend. If somebody's wearing on you or grading on you or even just unsettling your spirit, mute them for a little while. It's okay. They won't know, uh, but it'll help I, you. That is so good. That is yes. so good. I've, I've done that. And, and let's face it, it could be muting for some people. It could be muting. You know what? I'm always envious of that person. And so, mm -hmm. You know, I just, I'm going to get it out of my way. Yeah. Right. Yep, yep. Or, or it's, you know what? That person's always complaining. Like they're always complaining about how they lack. I don't need that. Cause I'm trying to model abundance in my life. Not scarcity. Is that kind of what you're saying? Match. Not yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so, so your routine has to do with what you're consuming has to do with how you're moving your body, set some alarms on your phone. Um, you know, what does your routine look like? And here's something, uh, for here's what I created for myself during this isolation. Today is day 10 for me. I committed to doing a live video every single day during this period and I'm calling it your daily dose of vitamin C, like my name, right? Okay. Vitamin C. And so it's making me get up, get dressed, 
be coherent and be on camera. It's making me go through the motions of mailing my list and posting on social media and showing up for my people. It's training me in those ways. I've never been so faithful to live as I have been this last 10 days. And it's what I call a minimum expectation. So one of your routines during this time, listen, we know those people that are like, I'm going to use this isolation to build my upper body strength and to drop 10 pounds and to consume this many books. I think we need to set some minimum. It's the only time in the in the world you're going to hear me say minimum, some minimum expectations for ourselves. And for me, my minimum daily expectation is to show up for my audience, do the vitamin C, and then the process that goes with distributing it, right? I love if you're it. Having a great day and a sunshine day and a flow day and uh, mental energy is good and healthy and everybody's cooperative. <laughs> we don't have chaos breaking out. Then I can set, then I have also set some blue sky, some dream expectation. So it's a good day if I hit my minimums and I'm going to celebrate with no shame and I'm going to be okay and cut myself some slack or I set some maximum goals. You know what? If, if I can do this, then I would also like to set this up, talk to so-and-so and create this. So anytime I fall in between those two ranges, it's a good day. And my kids, no, my kids will be like, have you shot your video today yet? Have you done your vitamin C yet today? And so set yourself some minimum expectations during this time period. And also even after that what's is so the good. minimum that you're going to show up and then what's the maximum you could show up, but there's no shame at anything in between. Don't beat yourself up about it. Some days it's okay not to be okay. Guys, this is an interesting time. We've never been here before. My 15 year old who's almost 16 said last night, you know, it's kind of cool that in 10, 15 years, they're going to be reading history books about us. Exactly. She said, we've never been here before. Now, she's also, uh, we deal with uh, ups and downs. She and I deal with mental health and ups oh, and yeah. downs. And so we fight all those things internally. We're very self-aware. But um, so that's another reason you have to keep with your routines. Otherwise, your feelings will defeat you. Your oh, routines yeah. keep you on track when your feelings will derail you. That's good. Um, hang on. Hang on. Let's say that again. <laughs> Like routines keep you on track when, when your feelings derail you. Yeah, because your feelings and your emotions are, are based on hormones, based on what other people say, based on the weather. Can we just be honest that we've just had sun for the first time in so probably since early November and it affects me. I, I'm proudly sporting my first sunburn today because I sat in the sun yesterday. I am unashamed. Yes, I use sunscreen. Don't hit me up, y'all. I'm, I'm good. I know. Um, it changed how I was feeling about some things. That's good. I functioned good. anyway. I functioned through those feelings, but I but I showed up and I did it. And my kids saw it happen. They're like, where are you going? I'm going to go sit in the sun. Oh, good. Mom, you're solar powered. You need that. Yeah, oh, that's I good. do. Is that I do. You your solar power. I love that. So that's routines, boundaries and routines. So good. Routines will help you push past feelings if you make yourself, but you have to have a little bit of di discipline. Okay, let's talk about eight, accountability. Let's do it. We hate accountability. Y'all, we hate it because we want to hide. We want to... We want to do our own thing. Hashtag do what I want. You know, Hashtag. we we think that because we're entrepreneurs or have a side hustle, we can wake up when we want, eat what we want, do what we want. Yeah, that's going to not give you the results that you want, unfortunately, right. from this old and wise person who's been doing this a long time. Uh, so accountability is important, whether you are in a private coaching group or a social media group or you have a coach or you have a group with your church or you have a group of other parents, uh, you have to be accountable to somebody. Uh, first day of my vitamin C, I was publicly accountable. Guys, I'm going to show up for you every single day. The other wow. day, the topic of my video was, I don't want to be here. Yep. <laughs> I didn't yep. want to shoot that video. I didn't want to do it. And that's what I talked about that day. The fact that I just and, showed and, up anyway. And people, it was probably one of the most popular because people said authenticity is attractive. Like, yeah. That's what it's about. It's not putting on your false self. It's right. Putting exactly. On your real self. I love yeah. it. 
Exactly. So accountability is really important. Be accountable to a set group of people, um, whether you have to be in a coaching group. That's why coaching works for so many people, not because the coach is so wise and amazing. It's because you're having to show up and weigh in, so to speak. It's why Weight yes. Watchers works. It's why Tops works. It's why so many of those weight loss groups works because you're showing up to weigh in and Even showing up with a food right? We're virtual, like you're virtually showing up with people exactly. that you've never met, but, but exactly. they're saying, is your butt on the bike? Yep. So when I'm working with my coaching groups and my clients, I'm saying, okay, this has been great information. This has been fun today, but what will you do by the end of today and by the end of this week? What are you accountable for? Put it in the group and we're going to come hold you accountable for it. It's important. It's vital, especially now. Also be accountable to your family. Mm, that's good. That Set a good. goal with your family. Let them hold you accountable. We want to hold our kids accountable. We want to hold our spouse accountable. Listen, Mm, okay, I'm going to do an unfiltered tough love moment. Let's All assume, right. let's, let's assume those of you with a side hustle or a part time business or you're in and out of your business, I'm assuming there's another source of income somewhere. So let's say your spouse, he or she, um, kept showing up and being away from the house eight hours a day, nine hours a day, but always reinvesting all their money back into the business or coming and going or complaining they weren't making money or not contributing. Um, also too busy for you, too tired for you, too distracted for you, too discouraged for you. How long would you let them, you know, do that? How long until you held them accountable? Where's the paycheck? Mm. Where's the where's the forward motion? Where's the return on family investment here? Um, you don't have spousal support or child, uh, the kids supporting you because you are not showing them a return on their investment. So it has to be in the form of action, energy, progress or profit. It has to be. Keep yourself accountable even to your family. So then D is deadlines. Hey, okay. on deadlines, can you hang on one second? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This is gold. This is gold. We we have someone who's asked a question, and we might even save the D for the VIP if we run out of time. But okay. but Lori says, and and again, Lori's awesome. She's an author. She's had fear in her life. She's stepping it up. Read her question, and she basically says, "I tried, but I have not found anyone yet." I have tried connecting with different people for over the last 10 years. And every time though it has fallen through, I'm not sure I try to not let it down because when I do, I tend to start questioning what is wrong with me. What would you say to someone like Lori who, who genuinely says I've tried, but it might be me because it keeps falling through. What would you say to Lori? Well, Lori, it might be you if you quit showing up or if you hide out, right? We, t we say to people that quit coming to church, listen, when, when you've had a good week, the service needs you. When you've had a bad week, you need the service, right? Oh. It's, the, it's the same with accountability groups and social media groups. I would say that Carrie has a lot of great resources for you or the coach of your choice has a lot of great resources for you. You show up in that accountability group. You post in social media. You say... Who wants to to do accountability with me? Or you say to the void, because I promise you it's not a void. You say to the void, I'm posting this for accountability. Feel free to chime in. And then day two, guess what? You post again. Day three, you post again. Even if you're just being accountable to you and your creator and whoever may be watching, because you never know who's watching or listening. Uh, approximately 7% of people are chiming in. Look and look, that. look, Marianne says you can connect with me. There you go, Lori. When you're showing up and asking and putting out what you need right now, people are connecting in really positive ways, which is beautiful to see. But you have to keep showing up even when you feel unheard, unseen, unvalidated. Keep showing up because you never know when somebody else is watching you before they're bold enough to chime in or bold enough so to good. speak to it. So, so Lori, you hang in there. And if only you're being accountable to the people watching or only being accountable to the leader of the group or only being accountable to your creator, that still matters. That does. And I love it. You, you nailed it. Marion jumped up and said, Hey, in Lori's moment, I'm hey. here and we already have an answer. So folks, let, we're going to wrap this up in a moment. And here's why. Carrie has made a commitment and she is going live uh, at the top of the hour. We promised the VIP group that we would have some access to her. So Q and A, um, it's gonna be fantastic. She's gonna explain the D as well for B-R-A-D, Brad. Folks, what you need to do is you need to go to ignitingsoulsconference.com. 
slash online. It's free for the world, general tickets for everybody on planet Earth. We want as many people to be blessed today. Tag someone, share this, follow Carrie. We're gonna ask in a moment where you can find out more about her and her amazing book. But right now, if you wanna be part of the VIP group, go to the link and upgrade. And when we shut off in a moment, we'll then go fire up in the VIP group and we'll have a special backstage access to Carrie. And again, that's 97 bucks for the whole 14 days. So Carrie, you said you're going live on video every day and that is killer. You and I must have been thinking the same way because I texted you and said, hey, can you be on this one? How easy was that for you to say yes based on the fact that you had already made the commitment to show up? <laughs> You know, well, so because I, I because I knew I was dressing every day, doing my hair. You already have your makeup, makeup done. It's already going to be done. It's already going to be done. I also, uh, for those of you that are faith based or oh, yeah, yeah. you know even yeah. even universe based, I said, you know, uh, Lord, I'm willing. Send me. I'm going to show up as much as possible for people during this time. And so, uh, even when if it's not convenient, even if I'd rather be, you know, quite honestly, eating ice cream out of a pint container, binging on Netflix, guys, we're humans. Yes, we all we, feel that. Yesterday, I did my video on it's okay to not be okay, and I got emotional during my video, and I was standing in full sunlight. I had a birthday during isolation. I have a 16 year old who's not going to get to have a party and mm. celebrate with her friends because of isolation. And, and she was the lead in Greece for the spring musical and it's been canceled. She was Sandy as a sophomore. Right. I mean, it's, right. she's Sorry. been training her whole life for this. And so we have real grief right now about things. And my grief can't be diminished because of, of your grief and vice versa. I honor yours and you honor mine. These are big, big times. But I said, OK, Lord, what does this make possible? Our friend Michael Hyatt and Gail say that. What does this make possible? Here I am. You have mobilized me at this moment. I've been doing video for 100 years. I am really comfortable communicating. Send me. Where do I need to show up? Who needs to hear from me? Who can I encourage or love on or make eye contact with and say, I get it. We're in this together. It's hard. It stinks. It's yucky. Let's pull out Brad and let's make the best of it. Who do I want to be when this is over? That's good. Wow, folks. That's why I wanted to bring Carrie on. That's why she's our first guest. Carrie, you might not know this. Tomorrow night, we have an NCAA Big Ten yes. finalist who, who didn't got get to canceled, play, who got canceled. Um, he's going to the Olympics as a as a um, qualifier, and they told him next year. Well, they told yeah next year. You're right. They told him you're done. And Colin has a faith, and he said, you know what? I was so bummed, but I still have an identity, and that's kind of what we're talking about today. I love what you're saying. Just because you're a mom, just because you're a dad doesn't mean that you just give up every single dream for the kids. You may be making excuses. I mean, I took that away and then I took away your routine. Oh my gosh, that was so good. Routine, something like, uh, you know, protects us from when emotions- From your feelings, yeah. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah. Stay in your routine because your routine will not lie. It will not betray you, but your feelings and your emotions will. <sighs> Folks, tag somebody who needs this, share it. This is just day one, session one of the Igniting Souls Conference online. We have seven other days, 13 other sessions, amazing guests. Right now, upgrade if you want. We're going live into the VIP group. I already see people doing it. If you're part of the VIP, type in VIP. Carrie, this was amazing. What is your book? I know what it is. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a copy with me. They're all- they're the Barefoot Executive. The Barefoot Executive. I wrote it in 2011 and now look, it's still so relevant because we're all Barefoot Executives right now. Wow. Uh, you guys, it's available on audio. It's available from all the places. Also, you can find me Facebook, Carrie Wilkerson. Go to the business page, not my private page. Go to the business page. That's where I go live every day. I have a YouTube channel, Carrie Wilkerson. I spell it like Stephen King, C-A-R-R-I-E, but I'm not as scary. And then also Instagram, Carrie Wilkerson. Listen, if you go to my site, I have a video coaching that's absolutely free to encourage you the next seven days. I have a lead generator. Maybe you're wondering how to how to work during this time. Some free and simple things you can do to grow your business during that time. Let us help help you. We want to be helpful. We want to serve. 
in such a time as this. That is so true. Guys, thanks so much. Ladies, thank you so much. We're going to the VIP group. Take care. And thank you so much, Carrie, for being here. Go follow her. Go get her stuff. And uh, we're going to chat in the VIP group. Talk to you soon, folks.